Hi everyone, and thanks very much for joining us on Facebook Live. Um, we hope that we'll be able to impart some knowledge today, and, uh, and please do, throughout the process, feel free to ask questions of us. Um, so, you know, those that have joined us, you might be students, you might be graduates, um, and you're wondering about the next step in your career and how to kickstart sort of that job search. So we're here to help. Um, and hopefully we can provide you with some insights into the, what the processes would be like um, and also some guidance as to how to uh, land that first role. But, um, but I guess before we do that, we should probably introduce ourselves. My name's Alex. I'm Isabel and we're from Grad Connection. Um, just a bit of background about us before we dive into helping you uh, with all things Grad Program. Uh, we're Australia's most effective careers resource for uni talent. Um, every year about 71% of successful grads have used our platform to get their grad program. Um, we work with over 350 employers from all areas of business, um, anything you can think of really. Um, and there's hundreds and hundreds of opportunities for students um, all year round on our platform. Uh, yeah, we're basically the one-stop shop for everything grad intern, um, student job wise. So yeah, as um, as Lisa said, if you do have any questions throughout the process, um, either type them into Facebook um, or, you know, and then we'll do our very best to answer them for you. Um, so I think probably a good place to start is to start at the very beginning, to sort of give you a bit of an idea as to the sorts of roles that you as a student or a graduate might have access to and you know what you should be thinking about and when you should be thinking about them. So you might have heard about internship programs. Um, these are programs that run generally in your penultimate year of university, so your second to last year of finishing uni. Um, and they're generally short-term roles, so they might be a couple of weeks um, to a couple of months in duration, or they might just be throughout your um, penultimate year, a day or two a week with an organisation. It really depends what type of organisation you're looking for. Um, and it's like out there. Um, the idea behind these is that it gives you a little bit of a taste as to what it might be like working um, in that office or with those uh, with those colleagues and it also um, gives you the opportunity to sort of try before you buy and see whether that might be somewhere that you might like to do your graduate position. So it also might help you to build out your resume and also build out your skills as well. Uh, so they'll put you through all sorts of training and give you exposure to projects, all those sorts of things. And that's really important, I guess, um, so you understand what the workforce is all about. Um, just an aside as well, most uh, of the employers that offer an internship program will try and convert their uh, interns into graduates as well. So it's a really great way to get into a fantastic organisation early and, um, and really make your mark and get yourself set up before you get into your last year of uni. Have a good job before you even start looking. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously the next step is your final year looking for all the grad programs. Um, I uh, have the distinct honour of being Grad Connection's first graduate. Um, so I've done the whole research from the student side as well and gone through all the, um, all the steps and all the processes. Uh, it, so a grad program is basically the work you do full time after your degree. Um, it can be like organised in rotations or it can just be one job for the entire duration. Uh, it's a great way for employers to bring new talent into the organisation. It's a, like young people, fresh, uh, really excited, uh, great way to kind of revive an organisation with some youth in there. Um, yeah, it can be, you could end up rotating through several different fields or just the one. There's a lot of grad programs out there that will, um, especially government, that will let you rotate through almost any business area. Um, and for like a fair amount of time as well. So you could end up doing six months in somewhere and then 12 months somewhere else and um, really get a taster for what you might actually be interested in. And then there's the just one role for the entire time, which is another great way to really dig your heels in and get to know the detail of the job you might actually end up in um, and get to know the day-to-day -day work and the overall kind of big project stuff as well. Um, yeah, 
so most of these grad programs will be advertised in February, March. So that's coming up very quickly. It's time to get researching and um, having a look for what everything is and where it all, who's advertising and where. Um, so come end of mid-Feb, start of March, everyone will be posting for their grad programs. Uh, the, yeah, just about when you start uni is when you should start looking. So I guess on an aside from that, um, a lot of companies will also be advertising their internship programs um, at the same time as they will be yes. advertising their grad programs. Some uh, some unis go back quite late, so it is yeah. a really good idea to start looking during February uh, and just make sure that you're not missing out on any roles, uh, especially if you're on one of those campuses <laughs> that does go back quite late. Yes. I know there's a few of you that have extended summer holidays and have a wonderful time, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but try not to, I guess, miss out on those opportunities. So, so keep your ear to the ground. Yeah, and one um, of the kind of key things about the grad program as opposed to um, an entry level position or such is the real focus on training and development. So it's a lot about building future leaders for that business. You're, they're really, as an organization, investing in you and putting a lot of time and effort into giving you the soft skills you might not have picked up while you were in uni or filling those gaps that your degree might not have even known was relevant to the industry at the time. Um, so it's a really great way to build your future within company that's really dedicated to you and your growth. Absolutely. And, and I guess there's a lot of different options with grad programs mm. as well as in the size of organisation that you might be yeah. joining. You know, there might be an organisation where you'll be one of 600 graduates <laughs> starting at the same time, so a really big cohort. Um, or you might be the only graduate in your business. So, yeah. And there's benefits to both. I guess it's worthwhile thinking what might appeal to you. So some of the benefits of a large grad program is that you have a lot of people that you can go to mm. um, and a whole team of you going through the same thing at the same time. Um, however, if you are the only person in your business, that might give you some additional exposure to great yeah. leaders within the business and actually being able to get your teeth into all sorts of different types of work. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of other um, opportunities there but I think it's you know it's something that you need to decide for yourself yeah. and um, and work out what you want to get out of it. So Izzy sort of alluded to another type of role that you might be able to get, and that's an entry level role. Sometimes people talk about these as graduate roles. Um, the only distinction that we're making here is that a graduate role would be a graduate program, um, while an entry level role might be something that you're literally being hired straight into the business as a graduate fresh out of uni and um, you're straight into a full-time role and a full-time job. So you can do, um, you're basically part of the team from day one. The learning and the way that these are structured are a little bit different to a traditional grad program. Um, your learning might be a little bit more self-directed, so you might need to actually go looking for uh, opportunities to learn out there. And, um, and to really ask questions. But and that kind of also means you can pick the kind of learning you end up putting your hand up for. Exactly. It could be awesome if you're a really self-directed person. Absolutely. Um, it also uh, sort of means that you're given all your on-the-job training as you go. They're not expecting you as a graduate to come in knowing everything and being able to work on everything straight away. They will give you training um, and they're not expecting you to have tons of experience beforehand. The reason why they want you is because you're new talent that can really give them a fresh perspective and hopefully help them grow their business. So that's just a way to look at it. So if you're um, just joining us, we're going through all things grad program from how to apply to what it's currently like to be a grad in the market and all that kind of stuff. Feel free to just drop us a line on Facebook in the comments and ask us any questions you might have. Um, so, in terms of the graduate market itself, um, there's a lot of trends that are kind of going on at the moment. There's been some media recently about how um, graduate opportunities are declining, but that you read the whole article, it's not really true. They're kind of growing. You get more and more opportunities year on year, and it's, um, yeah, it's really growing. There's more space for you. And Kind of the main thing is because there's so many opportunities, you really want to do your research and see where you do want to end up. 
as um, a grad in whatever company because there are so many options. Um, you might want to think about whether you want to be in a large company or a small to medium company, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, grad and intern recruitment times, there's two key times that you want to be looking. Um, it's when most people go out and most people advertise, so it's February, March, about 60% of like roles will go up then, and then in July, August, it's big internship season, and it's all the other roles and other programs that are trying to cut in and grab everyone who might not have known in February, March that they could have been a grad. <laughs> Which often happens. Yeah, yeah like myself. <laughs> <laughs> it is the beginning of your final year of uni. Yes, very that's generally times. people are looking. So, um, yeah, and and you know, don't be disheartened if you have missed that time. Yeah, uh, a first a grad that's the first year out of uni um, is still able to apply for graduate roles. Absolutely. Um, and it, you know, you might have got decided to go overseas, or you might have decided to do something a little bit different. Yeah. So um, don't be disheartened. There is still roles available for for you guys. Completely. Don't rule yourself out because you took a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we all love doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so just following on from, from Izzy's points around what the market kind of looks like at the moment, there's a few other things that are happening um, within the market. So there's things like uh, organisations looking for students from non-traditional backgrounds. So an example of this might be one of the big accounting firms um, looking for people from a diverse background, for example, science, tech, engineering, maths. Um, to come into the business and actually work on clients that are based in those fields. Yeah. Um, so I guess the message there is to think outside of the box um, for the types of organisations that you're applying to. Um, you know, obviously on Grad Connection we have heaps of, of options for mm. you and you can search by the discipline that you are studying. So to give you a really good idea as to what opportunities are out there that you can take advantage yeah. of. Um, so I'd really encourage you to, to do that. Um, the other thing that we're seeing is that there's not a huge, and this question gets asked all the time, uh, there's not a huge emphasis uh, anymore on grades. Mm. Yes, they are important, you know, you do have to pass in order <laughs> to get your degree, uh, but there is, a lot of organisations are putting a lot more emphasis on the more well-rounded graduate, so yes. someone that has had a part-time job while they've been at uni or They've had, you know, the opportunity to uh, to work with student societies or, you know, getting involved on campus with various events and, and opportunities. So very much um, encourage you to sort of think about your uni experience as a really holistic one. And when you're putting your resume together, thinking about all those things that you might have done and adding them on there. So is there a question from Facebook I that I think can there see? is. Um, I think we got asked if you can take a holiday during the grad program. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the first thing that comes up is holidays. So Australian. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. So I, I think it completely depends on the company. So depending on what field you're working in, it might be that your projects last the entire year or the entire duration of your grad program. So sliding a holiday in there might be a bit difficult. But um, I've also got friends who, between rotations, have managed to slide a week in there and get away to down to Tassie or something for a week. But it's one of those things that when you join a grad program, you're really committed to your career progression. So there's some things that might need to take precedence over um, a sneaky holiday. Yeah. I think the other thing to note is that when you do start working full time, you are entitled to four weeks and yep. you leave. Um, but that is very dependent on your employer. So you do actually mm. have to apply for that leave and they're able to tell you, actually, no, this is not a good time. Um, you need to reschedule that. Um, I would encourage you to put you know, your best foot forward with your organisation as well and, and you know, try and work out when the busy times are going to be and try and avoid even asking for leave during those times because that will sort of show that you've taken the initiative there. Um, and another thing to bear in mind, which you know, a lot of people don't realise, is that over Christmas often um, you are yes. forced to take some leave. Yeah. So uh, bear that in mind in your four weeks too. But again, just something to get used to. You know, yeah, exactly. Coming off having three months uni oh. holidays, which 
I think we'd all love to go yeah, back to. Yeah, love to go back to that. So, um, so we've got another question about being a law grad in Canberra University, and in the ACT, most law firms work with government in some respect and require security clearance, and visa restrictions and all of that kind of stuff really um, impact that. And my solution to like overcoming that barrier would be maybe consider moving to Sydney or Melbourne, where those law firms have less. To um, like all the other people who offer grad programs. It might also be something um, to think about, perhaps going to a smaller law firm yeah. that might not necessarily work with government. Unfortunately, it's not something, visa restrictions are a very tricky one mm. um, and it is something that is uh, is required by all the Australian government. So, um, so I would... You know, I'd encourage you to do your research as to who might offer programs that don't that don't have that. Uh, if you've just tuned in, we're Alex and Isabel from Grad Connection. Uh, we're basically just taking you through all things grad program, how to apply, what the market looks like, some some of our hot tips we've picked up along the way, all that kind of stuff. Shoot us any questions you might have over Facebook, and when they come up, we'll answer them to the best of our abilities. Excellent. So what we were talking about was just market conditions and, and sort of what's happening in the grad space at the moment. Um, the other thing, so we talked about grades and, you know, grades aren't necessarily everything. Um, another thing to sort of think about is the way that you'll go through the process. So I know that um, we'll be talking about that a little bit later on, yeah. uh, but some of the sort of changes that we've seen in the last couple of years is the... Uh, processes and the use of technology that is being implemented within the grad process. So, you know, you can expect to see things like gamified testing um, when you're going into those programs. You know, you could be doing video interviews, you could be doing um, online testing, uh, because a lot of these larger organisations particularly do get a lot of applications and so they're using that as a way to uh, work out whether you're going to be able to fit with the organisation and um, and then take it from there as to whether you're going to progress further. So uh, that's another thing that's happening. And and I guess the next thing that we probably need to talk about, it's a nice add-on. Is the, the, the actually applying? Search the company. Um, that's one of the main things is actually understanding what the company you're applying for does um, in terms of the business they do, the breadth, where they do business, all that kind of stuff. It'll really allow you to better answer those long form questions they might have in the first application part. It'll give you some background when you go to assessment centers to interviews. If you've researched the company and you understand what they do, you, you're on great footing already. Um, the other thing is to make sure to adjust your cover letter and resume to each role you're applying for. Um, grad programs aren't something that you can copy paste the same answers and the same cover letter over and over again. Uh, you really need to be able to kind of fine tune what the role you're applying for, uh, the experience you're citing or your extracurriculars on your resume to each role because they're all looking for something a little bit different and you should be able to apply that little bit difference to each of them. And make sure you just haven't copy pasted the wrong company name into the cover letter. Um, they can definitely tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing that I always found really helpful was having someone else sense check my applications for me. Because you go through and you do a couple and you end up just in your own little world of reading what you think you've written as opposed to what you might have actually written. Um, so the same as uni. When I um, wrote an essay, I'd have someone check it. When I wrote an application for a grad program, I'd make sure someone would check it for me. Um, it's just a great extra little little thing that will help you be much better in your application. Great. Um, just letting you know, we have had a question um, from Facebook that, that there's, there's someone graduating finance in July any tips for landing the interviews? <laughs> now that's fantastic, um, and we are actually going to go into that a little bit later. If Correct, that's all right. right. Yeah. Um, we will certainly be um, be covering off all of that. So stay tuned. We'll, we will get there. So don't worry. Um, so I guess 
moving on from from what Isabel's been talking about, uh, she did mention doing some research, mm. and I thought it might be a good idea to run you through some some great ways to do that research. Yeah. So. Uh, it's really important to know what you're applying for, as Isabel said. So the way that you're going to be able to do that is uh, there's a couple of different ways. Online is your best resource. There is so much information out there for you. And um, the first place you sort of need to, to look is, uh, I guess, Grad Connection, obviously, <laughs> um, because they're all on there. Um, but from that point, going through the company's website that you're thinking of applying to and really having a look mm. on there as to what they do, the different, I guess, service lines that yeah. they might have, the organisations that they work with, what their client base might be like, all those sorts of things. Also what they do for community. Yes. Um, I find for myself and my generation that I'm in touch with, it makes a big difference if you feel really good about the company and you're not going to know that unless you research it. Absolutely. So uh, the other part of that as well is, you know, what, what have they been doing in the news? Yeah. You know, have you, and let's face it, we're not all going to be sitting there <laughs> reading the Fin Review yeah. um, from cover to cover every day as much as we might like to <laughs> or not. Um, or I think, you know, especially as a student, you might not necessarily have enough time to be doing that all the time. I think the key part is that you can actually do that really efficiently online. So for yeah. example, you could set up a LinkedIn profile for yourself or even subscribe to some of the news channels on Facebook and actually subscribe to those companies as well. So you're seeing the company that you're looking to apply for, mm -hmm. you're seeing what they're putting out there into the world and the sorts of news that they're being seen in. Um, and that gives you a little bit more to talk about when you're getting to the nitty gritty stage down the end. Um, and also sometimes in the interview process, um, or the application process, they'll ask you why you want to work yes. for that particular company. And if you can cite a news article that they've been in mm. recently as one of your reasons, then it shows that you've actually gone beyond the copy and paste of the <laughs> mission statement from the company website. Yeah. So having a think about that is a, is a really good way to, I guess, get yourself ahead mm. of the game. Be a little bit a step ahead. Very much. Yeah. And, you know, there's only about 5 or 10% um, of students that are actually using LinkedIn and yeah. using it effectively. Uh, the biggest thing that people say to me as to why, as a student, they're not using LinkedIn is, oh, I don't have, I don't have any work experience yet. You know, I don't know what to put on there. There's plenty of things you can put on LinkedIn. Uh, and it's also, from the other side of it, a really great way to get served um, daily updates as yes. to what's going on in the world and company updates when you're doing your research. So hot tip for you. Completely. And I think the other side of that um, to online research is doing some research um, within your own field of like network, networks, connection and <laughs> networks. Um, Beauty of live Facebook. Um, yeah. So if you've got some family and friends who are in business or work in a business that works with the one you want to apply for, sit them down and talk to them about it. They've got real, genuine, tangible experience in that company and they can probably tell you um, what the grads in that company have experienced or at least where they sit in the office um, and what it's like to work there, the company culture, all that kind of stuff from someone who you hope will be telling you the truth the whole time as well. Yes, definitely. Um, we just had another question from Facebook, so thank you for putting those questions out there. Um, and a reminder that you can still put them on there. We will answer <laughs> them as we get to them. Um, the question is, if it's been a year since I've finished my degree, can I still apply for various grad roles? Now, that's actually a really good question. Um, you are able to still apply. It depends on the organisation again. Uh, they will generally tell you if they want you to definitely be in your final year. But we generally find that organisations will take graduate applications up to about a year or two out of your degree. Yep. Beyond that, you're probably a bit too far along to be going into a graduate role. Uh, but you can still apply for those entry level roles we discussed earlier. Exactly. So hopefully that answered your question. And then the other, for doing all your research, the other really great resource that um, isn't utilised as much as you hope it is, is the career service at your uni. Um, they usually have like a wealth of knowledge about the companies, how to apply, how to research, what it's like, what they have on offer usually year on year and all that kind of stuff. And um, you can one-on-one -on -one sit with them, which is incredible. It's uh, a service that 
is really should be jumped on by more people. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I don't think it's utilized enough. Yeah. So and they're really excellent. So yeah, they're really great. To the make course. make use of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So where are we? Um, I think. Again, if you're just joining us yes. on LinkedIn, and uh, sorry, I'm on, <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> on Facebook again, the joys of live Facebook. <laughs> um, my name is Alex, and this is Isabel, and we're from Grad Connection. Um, so we're a university, well, a jobs board for university students and graduates. You probably already know who we are. Hopefully, <laughs> if you're if you've tuned in, but we will be answering any of your questions about graduate programs, internships. And the process because it's just about to start. Yeah. So uh, please feel free to add those on Facebook uh, in the comment section, and we'll get to them. So great. Awesome. So next, the application process itself. Uh, I guess looking at what to expect, and um, and what you what you can encounter along the way. Mm -hmm. So every process for every employer is a little bit different. Uh, what we're trying to give you here is a bit of an overview as to the sorts of things you might encounter. So it could be a combination of all of these things or it might be just one or two. So you know, don't take this as gospel, but hopefully we can give you a bit of an overview as to what to expect. So there's a whole lot of different elements that you might have um, and what we're going to do uh, in the future as well is do some deep dives into some of these elements um, in future work, Facebook Live workshops. Um, so you can expect to see them in the next couple of weeks. So we just had a question through on Facebook about face-to-face um, -face interviews and how to respond to what do you offer to the company. Give us like five minutes and we'll be down to the interview section and how to ace all that kind of stuff and we'll come back to that. Um, so the Isabel's already mentioned today a little bit about resumes and cover letters. Um, so one thing to note is that some organisations actually won't require an inter a, a cover letter and a resume. They'll just make you go through an online application. So you know that's it's very definitely worthwhile having your resume up to date uh, and a cover letter. I guess template up to date, um, but just bear in mind that some organisations will just want to ask you questions and get all of your information that way. So you know the process might take a little bit of extra time, um, and in that case, and I know how uni students love to leave things till the last minute. Um, I certainly did. I pulled a few all-nighters at the yep. end of everything, uh, but I would encourage you to start thinking about these applications earlier rather yeah. than later. Um, some organisations will even do rolling recruitment. So yes. once they open, they'll start screening candidates. And once those roles are filled, they're filled. So you're better off where you can uh, doing that interview, sorry, that application process earlier rather than later. Exactly. And giving you a bit of extra time if there's other things that you need to get, like transcripts, like you know, uh, references or anything yes. like that. So, so thinking about that. So. Um, the stuff that you would need to include in those resumes and cover letters. Um, anything that you have done at university, so if you've been part of a club or society, any sports that you might have taken part in, um, any part-time jobs obviously that you've had. You know, you might not think that working at McDonald's or Woolworths or, uh, you know, in a bar is relevant to, you know, your grad role that you're going for in an accounting firm. Um, but let me tell you, it absolutely is yep. because the sorts of skills that you're getting from those types of roles are critical to being able to function in the workplace. Yeah. So keep them in there and think about those skills that might be transferable. You know, you might have learnt negotiation skills if you've worked in the retail environment. Mm. You might have learnt some sales skills from from the same sort of thing. Completely. Customer service. You know, have you had to had a difficult customer that you've then had to turn around and make them. Um, I guess, be nice to you again. Uh, there's all sorts of things like that that, um, that you can take from some of the part-time roles that you've had and leadership experience from some of yes. your student societies, all those sorts of things. Include all of them in your resumes um, and also on the, your LinkedIn profile. So that's what we sort of talked about earlier. There you go, yeah. Um, the next step is the online testing. So not every company will do online testing, but the majority will in some form have online testing, be it gamified, so you're just kind of like in a theme park and solving all these number math 
image questions um, or just a ranking of value systems. There's a lot of different ways that they test those things. So actually on that um, online testing piece, on the gamified one, a uh, hot tip that I got from one of my uh, students that I, I was helping out in Canberra was that they did one originally and, and didn't do particularly well mm. and um, then went and downloaded a whole lot of games uh, app games on oh. their iPhone and um, some of those logic games or those sorts of things and did some practice on those and then came back and did another version of the testing a bit later and actually did much much better so those sorts of things like logical reasoning mm. those sorts of things uh, it's a bit of a sneaky you can tip. Brush up. Sneaky tip yeah, that you can use yeah. to uh, to brush up and do better. If you're just joining us, uh, this is Alex and I'm Isabel. We're from Grad Connection, um, Australia's most effective careers resource for uni talent. Um, we're answering all your questions about grad program process, what the market's like, what our tips are, all that kind of stuff. So if you have any questions you want to ask us, just comment away on Facebook and we'll get to answering them for you. Um, so back to online testing. The my kind of biggest tip for online testing is do it somewhere where you'll be comfortable actually doing the test. So if it's one of those game ones where you need a mouse, I've tried it on my trackpad before and it's not the same. Just equip yourself and give yourself the best chance to do well. So you maybe don't want to do it while you've got Netflix on on another screen in the same room. You really want to sit down, give yourself the best chance to do really well in it. And be honest with all those kinds of um, rankings of qualities and all that kind of stuff because if you're not honest and you join a company that wants you for that not honesty, you're probably not going to fit and end up staying there very long. You'll hate it. Yeah. yeah they'll hate it. Exactly. So. <laughs> it's not going to end well. Just be honest. Um, and then the other thing is it's, they always say it, but do the practice questions. Same thing with um, download an app and get used to the functionality and all, all the logical reasoning and all that kind of stuff, play the games, do the practice questions, get an understanding of the kind of format they're asking for you to answer in, um, what the time limit expectations are and all that kind of stuff before you just dive straight into it. I think just on that as well, there are often time limits um, mm. on these sorts of things. If there's a reason why you need some assistance with that, um, or if you have any special needs, um, then it's really important that you tell the employer ahead of time. Um, they're more than happy to make allowances for mm. you. And, um, and actually, they, they probably would love to, to be able to help you as much as possible through the yeah. process. So if there is a legitimate reason that you do need some assistance, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. Um, and and they're more than likely going to be able to accommodate you. Completely. And I think that's part of one of the biggest things that you need to remember as you go through this process is that everyone on both sides of this wants you to succeed. They want you to have a great grad program and a great experience the whole time through. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things. And then uh, video interviews, which are always a bit of a scary one. Um, <laughs> you either hate them or tolerate them. Um, <laughs> And my, my kind of big pet peeve with them was that I never really knew how to be, to feel comfortable staring at a screen and talking to it like it's a person. So what I found is that I put up a picture of my mum on the screen and just pretended like I was chatting to her and she was asking me these questions and um, it just kind of took that edge off staring at yourself the <laughs> entire time because usually they play it back to you as they're asking questions and you end up staring at yourself the entire time and it can feel really disconnected so if you can even if you just have a family member or a friend sitting behind the camera that you can genuinely talk to and answer these questions to it might make a big difference to how kind of at ease and comfortable you seem and you feel which will make a big difference to the people who watch it and assess it um yeah and then it is a video so you do need to wear something appropriate <laughs> There's no pajamas. All, joke, all jokes aside, yeah. um, we've heard lots of horror stories about yes. that. Yeah. And mum and dad getting in the background and doing the vacuuming and all sorts of things. Yeah. So, um, it's pretty you funny. You just want to <laughs> wear something that you would actually wear to the office that you're trying to become a part of the company. Um, if you're not going to wear a t-shirt and jeans to the office, then don't wear a t-shirt and jeans to the video interview. Um, treat it like it's a face-to-face -face and in that respect. 
yeah, and you maybe kind of want to make sure that your surroundings and your location is pretty secure. You don't want mum popping in with some cookies and asking you if you want some dinner or anything. Um, because all of that, you usually get one or two chances or none to redo the video, the little portion answer sections. Um, so you want to make sure you can get it right the first time and uh, not have to feel like, oh no, <laughs> how do I explain to them that mum was just a really good cook? Right? <laughs> I guess the, uh, the other thing with that as well is be careful what's on the wall behind you. Yes. Um, I think that's happened quite a lot, that there's mm. been something not that appropriate on yeah. that wall. So have a think about where you're doing it. Uh, I did also hear from one of the employers that we work with that, and don't everybody go out and do this, <laughs> uh, but that they're watching a lot of these videos. So what happens is you record them and then they'll watch them generally back to back to back. Yeah. So if you can think about being somewhere that's a little bit different, you know, someone did mm. theirs outside, uh, some, something that's breaking the monotony for them, it can be quite a, a nice change. That would be so cool. And it will help you to sort of stand out in that process as well. Yeah. Uh, obviously, again, you know, a park where there's people <laughs> playing rugby behind you mm. and you're getting hit by a ball in the head is probably not the best choice. Yeah. But somewhere quiet, a quiet courtyard or something, but or in the garden where you might not get disturbed is can be a nice option. But again, don't everybody rush out and do that. Because <laughs> then that will become the norm and yeah. you'll be back at home to break that stereotype. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So moving on to what would generally be the next step in the process, that's the assessment centre. Mm. So, you know, what is an assessment centre? If you haven't heard that term before, basically what it is is a group interview. So you will have passed a few of the initial hurdles to get into a, uh, the next stage in the process. And you'll sit in a room, you could be in a group on a table with, you know, between six and ten other students. You might just be on your own in one room and that's it. Or you might be in a room with, you know, a hundred other people. Mm. It depends on the organisation what that will look like. Uh, and the, the point of a group interview is to really see how you work in a team, um, to test things like what your communication skills are like, um, how you contribute to a group, uh, what you're actually uh, what you're actually contributing is it value valuable? Um, things like time management, mm. uh, some technical knowledge depends on the type of role you're going for, uh, whether they're expecting you to have technical knowledge going in or whether it's more of a soft skills assessment, um, and also presentation skills. So generally, what will happen is you'll have some time in the group to uh, work on a problem. Um, don't be put off if in the middle of the process someone yeah. <laughs> jumps in with an issue for you. Um, again, that's just a way of testing how you respond to mm. that issue. So, uh, and often with assessment centres, there's there's not necessarily a right answer. Yep. It's it's how you've approached the pro the problem mm. that they've presented you with, how you've worked with the team that you're on the table with, and um, generally at the end they'll ask you to do a presentation. And often that presentation will be a group presentation. Yeah. And so, again, it's very much about have you timed it out so everyone gets a go? Have mm. you articulated yourself well? You know, are you presenting your problem or your solution to the problem in an efficient and effective way yeah. and, and really answering the question? And are you uh, not taking too much time so the person at the end doesn't get to speak? Yeah, exactly. So a couple um, of little things. Sorry to be aware we, aware of in a in an assessment centre. So a little tip is to set a timer at the very beginning. Ah. Uh, so make sure you know you might have your mobile phone. Um, there's a timer <laughs> on there. Put it on silent. Put it on silent, <laughs> but um, put the timer on at the start so you know exactly where you are in that assessment centre. Um, think about things like listening to other people. It's often as important as contributing. So obviously. You know, there might be a group of alphas on your table and everyone's <laughs> sort of competing against each other. Um, sometimes if you listen and try and sort of work in what other people are saying, mm. that can be a really critical skill that they might be testing you on as well. Um, another little tip is if you notice that there's someone in the group that hasn't spoken, yes. a really simple thing to do would be like, hey, Isabel, what do you think about that? Do you agree with yeah. what they're saying? To try and bring people into the conversation 
Um, yes, you're competing with each other, but that also shows a little bit of empathy. Yeah. So you're actually showing that you... And you're usually not competing for just the one role. Yeah. If you attack it like you want your little group to all get the role, you're going to all succeed together as opposed to trying to bring people down. No one wants to hire that person. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We've also um, just had a question in from Facebook about um, having a problem getting a contactable character reference and how to get around that for applying to graduate and internship programs. Um, not all references have to be pick up the phone contactable. Employers can email, they can often send through just a form that's automatically emailed through to who Uh, I think I was almost done with that, to be honest. Oh, yeah. oh, the only other thing is that sometimes they will send you material to read ahead of time. Um, so this goes back to that being mm. prepared piece. Yep. Uh, if they have sent you material ahead of time, you absolutely have to have read it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know that I went to a lot of tutorials at uni where, you know, you were meant to do the readings and I thought, oh, you know what, I'll just wing it, it'll be right. Uh, <laughs> this is probably not the place to do that. So. Uh, really make sure you've read the material and you've gone in prepared uh, so you can actually add some value when, when you're doing that group work. Yeah, completely. Um, if you've just tuned in, uh, this is Alex and I'm Isabel. We're from Grad Connection, uh, Australia's most effective careers use resource for uni talent, all things intern, graduate program. And we're currently chatting through all of that. Um, if you've got any questions that you want to ask us, comment away on Facebook and we'll get to answering for them for you. Um, the next step in the process is the final one-on-one -on -one interview, and I know we had a question about that earlier. Yep. So hopefully this will answer that for you. Yep. Um, thank you for putting that on. We really love questions, so yes. please, please continue with doing that. Um, so the final interview, sometimes it's on the same day in the, after the assessment centre, sometimes you come back into the office after that. It depends on the organisation. Generally what they'll do with these interviews is that they will put you um, in front of someone from the business, um, generally one of the managers of the area you're looking to join. Uh, there might also be a graduate recruiter or a um, human resource person in that room as well. Uh, a lot of people get really nervous here yeah. and they go in and sort of start freaking out because there's <laughs> someone that's really senior in the room and you know, oh my god what are they going to think of me. Um, I guess the way that I would say to prepare for these is to go for something really simple, take a few deep breaths, um, understand that you know, they really want you to succeed. I think Izzy said it earlier, you know, no one likes to see anyone fall flat on their face. Yeah. And they're just people, so, and they really want to know you and they want to know yeah. what you have to offer. And they've um, probably been in the same situation, feeling the exact same things you are before. They have empathy for you. Exactly. You know, feel free if you want to to take in some notes. Yeah. Um, you can take in a, a notepad if you want to, um, and it's probably a good idea because then you're actually prepared ahead of time um, with any questions you might want to ask, and it gives you sort of something to refer back to yes. in case you sort of lose it in the interview a little bit. Which I so, think answers that Facebook question that you don't have to on the spot have an answer for those difficult questions like what do you bring to the company. If you do your research beforehand, and you can bring in some notes that you can answer that question, you can always refer back to it. You don't have to have everything off the top of your head. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I would probably, at this point, uh, emphasise that they are just notes. So yes. <laughs> no, yeah, there's none no... Of the reading. <laughs> That's, uh, I just had a, yeah, a bit of a flash of that. Um, so I guess that's the first part. So you'll have, um, you might have more than one person in there. Yeah. You know, direct your conversations to both of those people mm. and um, and your answers to the questions. Yeah. Um, there are questions that are generally always asked. So there's a really good way of preparing for those mm. ahead of time um, and making sure that you have some examples already ready and raring to go. Um, 